Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. This is a little bit different than our normal version. We are at our house on the bay, the Bay of Quinty, which is uh, basically near Trenton, Ontario. And we love to come out here sometimes and enjoy the view and the quiet and the countryside. And today I'm going to be making my Sylvia coat again. So it's my first coat. I have no idea how it's gonna go on, but I'm gonna take you along with me, all the ups and downs. I started by melting the interfacing to my pieces, or to my first piece. So the, the, the start's not been so good, but I've decided that I just had to get that out of the way, and now here we go. So, so I have my machine all set to go. I have my ironing space set up here, and I have all my pieces with ready to attach my interfacing. And then over here, if I can climb over the cord to my machine, I have all of my lining pieces set up. And isn't that pretty? I just, I love this. I think it's gonna be just gorgeous on the inside of the coat. So here I go, wish me luck. I'm back at it. We went out for a little breakfast and now I'm back. I had an iron mishap. <laughs> I had an iron mishap and uh, it was a little too hot and there is some polyester in my fabric and it melted the front of my coat. And so I have to recut two front pieces and a pocket lining, but at least it's not all done at the end. It's only two pieces and uh, the, the other side looks really great. Um, once I get the, the two pockets done, I'll show you where we are and then uh, we will keep going. Okay, recut, redone, I'm glad I did it. It really didn't take me that much longer and it was a really good thing to just do it and get it done. So here's what it looks like. So now we're starting to see the coat take shape and here are the pockets. And essentially I top stitched, I top stitched along here because I really felt like it needed it to lay flat. Um, and then you can see the pockets are in there and then the collar is gonna come up like that. I may end up edge stitching this as well by hand from underneath just to keep it flat because it does want to flip up. But other than that, progress, yay! Okay, time to sew the back pieces together down the back seam. This is straightforward enough. I don't think I can mess this up. <laughs> Although, don't count me out, you never know. Let's see. Okay, because I know that this is not pressing well, I did use a very, very light iron to just kind of get it a little bit open, but I want it to lay flat. So I'm going to top stitch down either side of this seam, and I think that'll actually give a nice detail to the back of the coat. Okay, so that was definitely the right decision because now the back of the coat is lying really nice and flat. So definitely recommend that. Let's see what's next. Okay, so I'm about to set in the sleeves and I've done the collar. I'll talk about the collar later. It was a little tricky, but maybe when I get it all together, it's gonna be normal. So I'm not gonna worry about it yet. But yeah, the sleeves are here and they're ready to go in. And yeah, here I go. Okay, scratch that. I just tried the sleeves on before attaching them and they're a little more snug than I like, so I'm gonna undo them and do them at a smaller hem or a smaller seam allowance to see if I can make them fit a little bit better. Okay, first try on. The sleeves are pretty good, I think. Little pockets here. Um, I have to start the lining, but I think the fit is good. I made the sleeves a little looser, like I said, because I want to be able to put like sweaters on and stuff underneath. And yeah, so so far it's looking like a coat. So this is, this is good, coats are good. Okay, I had a little break. I had some chips and some water and now I'm ready to, uh, to go for the lining. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm a little bit nervous, but this is how you learn, right? Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Here we go. Okay, 16. Pin the front facings to the front pieces, right sides together. Sew to the front piece as far as the mark in the hemline. Attention, the facing is longer than the lining and the lining is not sewn on all the way. Leave two centimeters open. Okay, so somehow I missed a step where you're supposed to close up the shoulder seams of the lining. I can't find it in the instructions, but 
I'm just doing it now. And uh, yeah, this is as real as real gets y'all when it comes to <laughs> a first coat. I'm like, ah. but you know what? Now that I'm on the lining, it's a lot less stressful because frankly, who's looking at the inside of my coat? Hopefully no one. So certainly not with any degree of uh, criti criticism. So I think, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna give it a go and we'll see what happens. gonna lie I'm getting a little tired <laughs> it is five o'clock I've been working on this on and off since about nine this morning but lots of off as well but lots of on um, I'm getting tired so I'm going to attach the sleeves so that the lining is yeah the lining will be all together there aren't any other pieces <laughs> floating around I'm gonna do the two sleeves and then I'm going to save uh, actually attaching the lining to the coat either tonight with a glass of wine or maybe in the morning but yeah so far it's been worth it it's totally been worth it I think it's gonna be something I wear a lot and it's pretty we all like pretty all right you guys it's late but I got my second wind and I want to work on this so I am now attaching the outer or the outer edge of the coat right sides together just all the way from here to there according to the directions and I matched the seam at the top okay that's what I'm doing now okay so now the lining is attached to the jacket around the outside and I also top stitched around the edge because I just felt like it wasn't gonna lay flat and I just tried it on and it looks great so now I just have to go to bed <laughs> and then in the morning I'm gonna figure out the last part of attaching the lining to the coat. All right, it is day two. It is nine in the morning. I've been fortified by coffee and now I am tackling the last part of attaching the lining to the coat. So the coat is inside out and I have pinned the lining to the edge of the coat. I'll be honest, the instructions are not very clear. Like I don't and even the pictures in the Schnitchen um, Flickr page that are supposed to be the instructions, I can't tell what I'm looking at, so it's really hard to, to use that as a guide. So I did go to Grainline Studios and watched um, and read their blog post on um, bagging a jacket, and that did help. And then I also found another one on, on finishing um, on another site, which I think if I can find it, I'll link that below as well. Anyway, fingers crossed. Worst comes to worst, I just flip it back inside and finish it by hand, but I'm gonna give it a shot. But I'm also going to use a basting stitch first so that if I have to pull it all out, um, it's a little bit easier because this fabric is so thin, I'm so worried about like putting a hole in it or I even put some fray check on the end overnight <laughs> so that, I don't know. I don't know what I thought was gonna happen overnight, but I did anyway. Okay, here I go. So confused. I don't know if I did something wrong a while ago or if I did something wrong now, but I don't know how to make this work. And I wish that I could just like fake it and sew it up because <laughs> I am definitely of the school of done is better than perfect. I'm really confused. Okay, I'm taking a break, so I can't figure it out. And I'm sure that it's something that I've done wrong earlier on probably in the construction and uh, I yeah I don't know I don't know how to fix it yet so I'm gonna take a break and that's okay because that's how we learn is we get completely frustrated and throw up our hands take a breath and then come back to it and in the end it is gonna be a very pretty coat look look how pretty look it's a coat right it's a coat it's like 95% there I just have to figure out what these angles are about and uh, I have a, I have an idea but I've tried three times and I'm really scared of shredding my lining fabric so taking a break working on something else I'll see you soon hi guys okay so I put the coat aside for a week a little over a week 
um, because I was a little bit frustrated. I didn't really know where to go from there and I wanted to sew some other things. So um, I sewed a few other things, which I'll show you in a, in a later video. Um, and then luckily, I'm so lucky, my next door neighbor, Janet, who's been my next door neighbor for since we've lived here, so a decade, is absolutely lovely. And she is a very, very experienced seamstress. And she's been sewing for I don't know how long. And so lovely Janet came over. She offered to come over and have a look at my coat. And thank goodness she did because... It turns out that I think I cut the facing wrong. I think I cut the facing too long. And because I had never sewn this coat or any coat, I didn't realize that I had sewed it wrong or cut it wrong. You know, if it was something else, I probably would have had an idea, but I had no idea. So I never would have figured it out if Janet hadn't come over because I cut it wrong. So anyway, in the end, we did this. We cut off the facing to the right length. We stitched the facing to the back of the coat and as well, we hemmed the lining, which I also had hemmed, if you'll remember, I had the lining to here, and I think I was just supposed to hem the lining. But in the instructions, it never said hem the lining, it just said, it just said fold up the lining, but it never said to hem it, so anyway. I <laughs> hemmed the lining and attached it to the facing. And so then we, bing, bam, boom, turned it around, <laughs> bing, bam, boom, a week and a half later. <laughs> and there we go coat I need to press this out but corner pretty done needs to be pressed out again so now all I have to do is I need to hem the bottom and I've decided that I'm because I've done so much top stitching on this I Janet made the suggestion that I just cover stitch over stitch use my over stitch um, stitch on my on my Elna and over stitch the hem and then just machine hem it. So I know some of you out there are cringing. Don't machine hem, it's a coat. When I do a beautiful coat in a beautiful fabric, I promise you, I promise you, I will hand stitch the hem. But I just want this puppy done because it's not a winter coat and winter is a coming. So I want to be able to wear this for a little bit and I want to be able to wear it today, hopefully to pick up my daughter from school. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it now. I brought my Elma down and I'm going to sew here and then I'm going to show it to you. Okay, here we go. It's done. It's done. I think I'm going to add a cuff. I have long arms. And I think I'm going to add a cuff to the end of this, but for the moment, it is lined. I will put a link to the Grainline Studios um, tutorial that I used to figure out how to line the sleeves properly. But it is fully lined. It is hemmed. I'm not going to show you the inside, so don't even ask. <laughs> At least not the inside of the hem. I've got to fix that up a little bit. But. So this fabric, I think I told you, is from the National Ballet of Canada. It's from, it's like a little cutoff from one from their, um, from their costume house. So I really wanted to use it. So I'm going to put some video in now of me wearing it. And yeah, I like it a lot. I learned so much. Um, I think it's one of those things too that when you wear it, I'll, I'll remember less how much pain it was to get it done. And I think I'm gonna wear it a lot. I really needed a mid-season coat and it was a great first shot. And I think now I will feel that when I want a you know a formal winter coat, I will feel confident doing that. So there you go. The good, the bad, and the beautiful. Brand new coat. Hurrah.